On today's episode of Kilts and Culture with the USA Kilts, we try Lafroig Quarter Cask. Ah, band aids. Delicious. Mm. The history of the Gallic lands is one of struggle punctuated by moments of sheer brilliance. Tartan is Scotland's gift to the world, and it is your personal heritage story. Howdy, boys and girls. Welcome to Kilts and Culture. I'm Rocky. That's Eric. Yo! Indeed. That Today? Was, might be the worst one I ever did. Potentially. Do you want to give it another shot? Yo! Yo, Adrian! Okay. Indeed. All right. As I blow out the mic. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Yo, Adrian! It's, it's fine. Over to you. Um, special treat. Very special treat. Yes. Today, we are trying from our good friend David Barr, the Lefroig Quarter Cask. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good one. Um, Mac, why don't you come collect your your quarter of the cask? That'd be a lot of whiskey. Maybe a third. <laughs> yeah. Your third cask. Why? And, Thank you. And what tart do you have on today there, Mr. Mac? I have the Red Hackle tartan on today. Red Hackle, uh, lovely, yeah, one lovely. one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. Applause, applause. Yep, yep. Hackle, Cheers. hackle. And away he goes. Indeed. Eric, what lovely tartan do you have I on today? I ain't wearing no tartan. This is the, this is the uh, non-Euclidean tartan known as a Calzite uh, custom brocade fabric done in Celtic knotwork. Yeah. I remember when we did that, uh, we, we bought, <laughs> begged and begged and pleaded them mm -hmm. for a piece of that years and years and years ago. Yep. It was a fun one. Yeah. You don't um, wear yours anymore. No, I think it's still in my closet. I don't mm -hmm. know what, it's in, I think it's in the back of the closet. I got to look that one. I got to look, yeah, you look should. for it. Got to yeah, hunt for it. Um, and I have on the, the lovely Nordic Heritage starting today. Off sought um, after. Off sought after, exactly. Mm -hmm. And what else do we have on? Well, I don't know about you, but I got my new little my bling, new little bling. bling here. Indeed. So, yep. Eric has on a sticker. They've, they've been bugging oh, the hell out of me. I thought I was, I thought I was going to fool somebody thinking it's actually a new sporn design. Oh, but... good God, no. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to people. Uh, the design. <laughs> the uh, uh, They've been bugging me for years and years and years that we need stickers. So, I finally broke down and got 5,000 freaking stickers. Finally. Yes. Vinyly. Vinyly. You have any idea how many naked coffee cups there are out there just waiting for these begging, stickers? Begging, pleading. Think of, think of all the Stanley cups that now can actually look fully clothed. Fair. Yeah, fair. to this. Fair. Right. And we also got some uh, little bling, little hat pin slash lapel badge. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, get in there, Adam. Look at that. Ooh, so fancy. Yep. So I'm excited for that. And cufflinks. And cufflinks, yep, yep, yep. We got same, cufflinks. Same too. lion, different body yeah. location. Yeah, we're just playing around with stuff, trying to offer fun, different little things with Schwag, our swag. Celtic black. Schwag. Yes, drip. This is actually my superhero identity because I just move it up here and it's like, I am Kilt Man. Lion Boy. Lion Boy. <laughs> lion O. <laughs> lion O. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, we're okay. not allowed to talk about 80s cartoons. Oh, right. We're not allowed to talk about 80s cartoons. So, all right. So, Lafroig. Quarter cask. Lafroig. Yes. <clears throat> Holy Band-Aids, Batman. That's 60s cartoons. No, not cartoons, but that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Right, Mac, what do we got for the tasting notes? Or so smelling for notes? the nose, what you're smelling is a smoldering peat with aromas of coconut and banana. Coconut and banana? <laughs> I almost got the banana. I actually almost got the banana. I... Dang it. Ah, I don't know about coconut and banana. I can sort of, I can almost get the banana. <laughs> okay. How weird if, is that? Hey, hey it, if you get it, I I believe that you got it. <laughs> well, we, we we know we have different palettes. And <clears throat> yes, yes. I don't have them, but. So, and uh, I think Matt did a bit of research on this. He said that the quarter cask is, uh, means that it's a cask, the, a quarter the size right. of a normal one. So there's right. more liquid in touch with the wood, which imparts more of the wood flavor into. Yep. The whiskey. Yeah, so. amplifying natural flavors of the whiskey in ex bourbon barrels. Yeah. It's got a lot of uh iodine, band aid and also a lot of iodine. Earthy kind of smell to it. Also not as seaweed. Yeah. All right. Well anyway. What are you getting, Mac? I'm still not getting any of the coconut or banana out of this. Yeah, yeah. I use zero fruit for me on this. Absolutely not. 
I got like the tannins from the wood that kind of like yeah. You know what is the the banana is like it's the same scent as the iodine, just weaker. See, I'm I'm not allowed to have bananas you can't, anymore. Right. Yeah, Mac Why can't are we have even bananas. asking him? I don't know. Have you <laughs> ever? Yeah, you've had a banana. Yeah, I used to eat them and Almost then died. Totally hated me. Yeah, mm-hmm. fair. All right, a little sippy sip. Hey, Slancha, happy Tartan Week. So in the palate, are you getting deep, complex, and smoky, and a surprising gentle sweetness? It is sweeter than other Lafrogs I've had. I'm getting... <clears throat> what did that me. do to your voice? <laughs> I'm getting... I got flug him. Here's a weird one for you. I'm getting earthy, dirt kind of taste. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the Band-Aid. Mm-hmm. I'm also getting a bit of skunk. Tell me I'm wrong. Go back in. Yeah. Give it a, get a little sip. Tell me if you taste skunk. A little bit of like a, what a skunk smells like. Yeah, the, kind I'm of like a skunk taste musk. In that. Yeah. I can see that. It just hit me. I've never described it that way before. I've never thought about it in that way. It just hit me. Does that be like a sulfurous note then? Well, they're saying the finish is really long. Drying with appropriate smoke and spire. Spire? Spire. Spire. Mm, I can taste the spire. <laughs> the um for the record, me saying the skunk thing isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just like a hint of a of a thing. Yeah, it smells like skunk, but not in a bad way. So you almost made me snark my <laughs> no, whiskey. So I know. I You're welcome. Oh, that up your nose. <laughs> oh, oh, that would burn in Ooh. many ways. Um yeah, it's it's got a weird like dry consistency on the tongue. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like a, not sandpapery on my tongue, but it's like a dry water as opposed to like a viscous kind of thing. I agree. It feels very centered. I'm getting a lot of flavor like in the middle of my mouth. Yeah. On the edges. Um, I like the sweetness and I'm getting a lot of pepper. There's a really nice balance. I, it's the peats there, but I'm getting more pepper personally than the, than the okay. peatiness. And I, I do like the note of sweetness because it kind of balances that out. I don't That's, know if I've ever... Watered. I haven't had Lafroig for quite a while, so I'm going to just a touch of water, see what happens to it. Hmm. Mm. I actually really like this one. Mm. Yeah, which is unusual for me. I don't usually go for a PD, but... <clears throat> it's got... Yeah, it's... I'm definitely burning a little bit more chest-wise. I'm definitely acid getting kind of thing. Yeah. I get that from the, the quarter cask. Like, when it's a really, really woody kind of uh, whiskey, I get a, a little bit of her, heartburn from it. Yeah, I smell the peat a lot. I don't get a lot of a lot of smoke. It has smoke, but I get more of the peat and the the wood kind of flavor to it. You agree, Mac? Yeah, and it's definitely definitely Oaky. woody. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oaky and peppery. That's what I'm going. But I don't get a ton of pepper, but I understand what you're saying. I do get more of the the peat. Oh, the water really mellowed it out. But not in a bad way. Gave me more. Yeah, it, it mellowed out the wood, but it gave me more peat. Even even more if that's mm-hmm. <laughs> if that's possible. All right. The some what some of the comments are saying is maybe they're referring to it as weed more than than skunk. Yeah. Like kind of. I have no. I I have no input on this. I can't. The weed, like kind of the weed smell. I couldn't yeah, give yeah. you. A, no weed to me. Weed is like a sweeter smell. You know what I mean? Um, I just find it disgusting. I hang out the wrong with people. <laughs> yeah, I've hung out. I've never partaken, but I've hung out with those people, and I just—I <clears throat> usually leave the room because this is just—it's <clears throat> it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Okay. All right, Mac. What are you gonna give it? Score one to ten. Going five one. Five one. Okay. Really? Kind of in the middle. I'm, I'm not sure if I like it, and I'm not sure if I don't like it. I'm just kind of, yeah, kind of in the middle of the road on this one. Okay. Understood. Eric? I Maybe it's because I haven't had a really PD one in a while, or so maybe it's just the novelty, but I want to score this high. Like, I'm going to go like a 7.2. Okay. If I were going to if, if I were gonna get something that was PD, if I were going to get a Lafroig, I would look for this one specifically. You know okay. what I mean? Well, just, almost all of the forks are going to be peaty. This one's just I know, I know, woodier. but this is, yeah, yeah, I like this, though. Okay. Yeah. No, no, uh, 
no shade thrown there. Um, I'm comparing it to like Lefroy 18. Uh, they do an 18 and do a 10. Um, I like the 18 a lot. I like the 10 medium. Um, the this the, the woody is screwing me up because of the because yeah. the indigestion-y kind of thing. Um, I'm gonna go six two, six two because it's it's for wow. the indigestion bit. Um, but That's like the weirdest set of scores we've had in a while. Yeah, no, it's it's reasonably <laughs> far. Well, it's it's a point point and a half, two points apart. Um, yeah, I prefer the regular Lefroig. Um, I like. I think I like this better. Understood. Hmm. So yeah, that's our score on it. Excellent. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. David Barr. I better not spill that. Get that over there. All right. Boys and girls, load in your comments. As always, we are here with your humble servants to answer whatever questions you have, kilts or culture related. While we are waiting for people to load in the comments. I'm going to throw a random one that just occurred to me. Throw a random if one. You had to, if you had to, since tomorrow is Tartan Day. Yes. What would you dust off, take out of the cabinet? Oh, this is only for special occasions. What would you drink whiskey wise for Tartan Day? Open 18 tomorrow. That's open that's 18. My, open 18 Period. is now that's my go to. I'm almost finished the bottle in my basement. I have a little bit in the bottle in my office. Um, we have a lot of whiskey around here, as you can kind of tell. Yeah. Um, we don't drink that often, I promise. But open 18, it's too expensive, but I love it. It's damn mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, man, that's good. Mac, what's your what's your go to for whiskey for Tartan Day? My go to right now is Shankies. 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 That's the whiskey I've been. Okay. I, I'm I'm going through more than I should. Shankies. <laughs> Fair. Kids are screaming. Okay. Have mm -hmm. a sip of Shankies, Eric. Yours. Mm, Shankies. Um, I'd probably go with the Dalmore. Dalmore. Mm, that's not a good one. Mm -hmm. I do love my Dalmore. Mm. It's about love back right there. There is. Mm. The Dalmore Cigar Malt. Cigar Malt. That's good stuff. That was good. Yeah. That was good. Oof, that's yeah. very good. Mm. Damn. That's what I'm saying. Now I want to go grab stuff off the back. Yeah, you All right. do. Next. On to business. Yes. Ginger with a top hat. Please talk free. The door is locked, just you and me. Um, the door is locked, just you and me. Uh, when getting into kilts on a limited budget... Is it better to purchase fewer high quality kilts to have the nicer wear or to buy more lower quality kilts to have the variety? What's the better tactic if you're on a budge? So do you want quantity or do you want quality? That is the that is the, the choice. Uh, there's the, the rub. questions. Yeah. Um, hmm. <clears throat> I would I would say this. Eric has a sticker on his mug now. I would say this: um, it, the the thing that matters most, thing that matters most. <laughs> I swear, this is just Let's start over. Yeah, if you're on a budget, if you're on a budget, the thing that matters most is start. Period. So, figure out what you can afford to spend on it. Um, figure out, you know, just you know, have a swear jar, have a coffee jar, you know, take your. Your, your daily coffee money for Starbucks and put it in the jar, put it in the jar, put it in the jar until you have, you know, 100 bucks or whatever it is to buy your first entry-level kilt and get something. Now, I'm, I'm also of the opinion that it's better to buy something nicer than you think you want than, than lower because you don't generally regret a, a higher quality purchase. You might regret a lower quality purchase. Um, but wherever you start, just start, just jump in, the water's fine. You gotta start somewhere. Um, as you start collecting, I would say your, your tastes will change over time. So <clears throat> the first kilt two, three you get, you're gonna look back on in two, three, four years, if you start wearing them more often, you're gonna look back on them and be like, ah, I don't like that one as much as I first did. Mm -hmm. That one's too simple, that one's too plain, or yeah, I just bought that one on a whim at a festival, I don't really like it anymore. Um, your tastes are going to evolve and they're gonna get nicer, generally speaking, over time. So the longer you save up, the more you spend on your first kill, within reason, obviously, um, the happier you're gonna be with it for a longer period of time. I would rather have a few higher quality 
kilts mm -hmm. or a reasonable number of high quality kilts and maybe a couple less expensive kilts to mow the grass in, right. to wear to the pub, to wear a Highland Games, whatever, just to beat up and not worry about as much. Mm -hmm. But I would say no matter where you fall on the scale of whether you want to get a bunch of lower end or a few higher end, I would say have one of each minimum and then fill out the middle kind of as you go. Maybe start with a cheap kilt, you know, hundred bucks or less, just to see if you like it, test it out a little bit and then save up for your next kilt for a, a wool kilt, whether it's a five yard wool or an eight yard wool kilt, get a nice one. So you have something to wear for nice dressier kind of occasions and then see which one you like better. If you really love that one that much more than the nice wool kilt, great. Then save up a little longer and get another wool kilt. If you're like, no, 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 I'd rather have a little bit more you know, options, variety, that kind of thing, then get a couple lower end kilts and then get a nice higher end kilt. As mm -hmm. you kind of go, you just figure it out. Yeah. Eric. Me? Yes. Um, I don't really disagree, but I will offer, I'll offer a, an alternate strategy for variety sake. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I'd want to go too high or too low uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you aim for the best of the best of the best, then if there's a problem with it or if you, you know, your weight fluctuates or if you can't afford to get anything else because you spent all your money on the kilt for a long time, you're going to have some regrets because of that. If you go too low, you're going to be getting a cheap, cheap ass kilt that basically doesn't fit you right. Um, it may wear wear out or it may not hang right, which is going to make you feel like you don't look good in it and may give you a false negative. Um, so I would try and go for something more in the middle, especially if you're nervous about your measurements. You don't want to spend five, six hundred bucks on a premier wool kilt and, and have messed up your measurements because you've never taken your measurements before or something like that, or, you know, because your weight is fluctuating or something like that. So I would try to go something a little nicer than the absolute bleh. Um, I definitely, I would still avoid doing an acrylic blend or a festival kilt, frankly, any of the Pakistani stuff, I would avoid that because you want to make sure that you will have the confidence that comes from it when you put it on for the first time. So you need something that is going to have to, that's going to fit you at least well, if not perfectly. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, but neither should you go for the super expensive one because you want, once you have one, you're probably going to want another one very, very soon. So you have that A, the variety, and B, the I'm not afraid to beat this one up. Agreed. I'll add another angle at it as well. Yet another angle. The, the kilt is the basis of the outfit. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, you're, if you're going to cheap out, for lack of a better term, or, or buy accessories that you're going to want to upgrade later, then I would say invest the money in the kilt itself, mm -hmm. but maybe buy a less expensive sporn. Maybe buy a cheaper belt or a cheaper kilt pin or, or maybe forego the kilt pin and put that, you know, 20, 30 bucks into the kilt. You know, so it's you, it's how you build the outfit over time. It's not going to happen in, unless you're independently wealthy. It's not going to happen in a day. You're going to build this outfit over time. Your tastes are going to change over time. The things you want to accentuate, accentuate the the parts of your heritage that you want to explore, whether it's a Nordic part, whether it's a Scottish part, whether it's your family tartan, whether it's your Irish county tartan, all these things are going to kind of, uh, uh, you're going to have different periods where you like one thing more than another, mm. or you want to accentuate one thing more than another. So I would say start with the kilt, start with that, and then build the outfit around it. And then, you know, if you're going to, again, if you're going to cheap out, cheap out in some of the accessories and then mm -hmm. replace them over time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's about it. I agree. I agree with ourselves. Yes. And be sure about those measurements. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Mr. Mac. All right. So we have Matt asking. Uh, he's got his Earthrise uh, tartan a, a couple weeks ago, um, and he loves it. Um, his question for us is, which tartan do we wish we would have designed that we didn't? Glen Africa. <laughs> <laughs> which tartan do we wish we would have designed that we didn't? For what um, reason, though? Meaning, like, which what... Essentially, what's the, the best tartan that's out there or the most popular tartan that's out or, there? Or a tartan that we think we could have done better with the concept because they screwed it up. What tartans do we think did a bad job? Um, 
Hmm. You know, many of the Commonwealth game tartans. I was going to say, it always comes down to the Commonwealth game tartans. Um, There's so many bad ones. Yeah, we wish, wish we... <sighs> the most recent one I liked. The set size is kind of ridiculous, but I, but I dig it. Um, what else? I think there was some... There, there's there's several whiskey tartans, and uh, Angel Share is good, but the uh, uh, there are several other ones that I think were lackluster mm -hmm. in their in their final mm -hmm. final design, final final resting place. Um, I'm trying to think, any other any tartans that we like that we wish we would have done? I don't have that kind of enviness, enviousness. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do have a feeling sometimes like um a designer missed the mark I'm, I'm i'm really struggling a couple of things now but usually for me it comes down to it's too simple like somebody somebody did like burr, burr, two colors great done <coughs> sobieski stewart's <coughs> i've i've i have captured the true essence of 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 the glen of the you yeah, know whatever i yeah. mean it's just like did you i don't know um overly simple tartan sometimes kind of like just feel disappointed to me if you look at the vestiarium scoticum Oh, a lot, a of, them lot are, of them are very, mm -hmm. very like the Cameron Tartan in there, Hamilton, all, like all the four or three square with an, a big block and a white stripe or a yellow stripe mm -hmm. or whatever in the other section. McQueen, all of those are very, very, very simple mm -hmm. in that book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I don't have I don't have a lot of envy. I'm envy that I'm envious maybe that someone thought of a particular topic to make a tartan for right. before we thought of right. it. I think that's more where my brain comes yeah. comes down to. Yeah. Um and I Oh, I did just think of one. I like several tartans that other people have done. Like there's nothing um like uh yeah, there, there's a lot of them that I'm like, oh I really like that. I but you won't let me say it. I'm not gonna let him say it. You're apparently. gonna be upset if I say it. Okay. Fair. Um here you go. I got one. I got Meet one. Give me a camera too. I got one. <laughs> okay. Isle of Sky. I I really like the Isle of Sky tartan. Uh -huh. I wish we would have done that. It's obviously been hugely popular. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's one that I would say it's not it's not my normal motif for a tartan. It's pretty subtle. It's a bit softer not quite feminine but it's it has purple in it so it kind of leans a little bit that direction it's got mm -hmm. a lavender kind of color yeah. um but it is a beautiful design it's very non-binary tartan exactly um the uh but yeah i would say isle of sky if i'm jealous of a tartan and or its success isle of sky just because of the beauty of it Okay, I can see that. I think it's pretty darn perfect. So yeah. what I would do that would be different. No, no, but... no, I wouldn't do anything to change it. Oh, that's my point. Just wish you could have the bragging rights of having. Yeah, I'm. I'm answering it. his original okay. question, okay. not the question we morphed it into. Okay. Well, all right. Um, jokes about you not letting me do things aside. Help me. Um, I've actually done this. I actually have done this because there's um, a couple of years ago now. I think it was um, this gentleman came out with a tartan for starfleet yes i'm a nerd we know this um and i looked at it and i really was hoping that a that we could offer it but he has it restricted down to very tightly with only members of his particular club uh and i thought the design was way too simple and that was part of the inspiration behind my pet tartan project which is called the spirit of the dragon which is a tartan based around the colors of the marriott carpet that has become such a huge thing for Dragon Con uh, because the colors of that carpet would be perfect for so many cosplay people, including Starfleet, X-Men, other superheroes. It's got these primary colors in like reds and golds and blues and black. And it's just like, it could look cool. It would have the sizzle of being about the con for anybody who's a fan of the con. And it, you know, it'd have a little bit of that little dog whistle thing because, you know, everybody knows the Marriott carpet. And it would also be such a great blend for all these different things that people like to do with it. Whereas the Starfleet, the official Starfleet tartan is just kind of like, eh. So I've actually been down that road. I, it took me a minute to realize it, but yeah, I did do that. Okay. Yep. Fair. Mac, did you have any? Uh, the only one that pops in my head is one we talked about this morning. Oh, what was that? that? We talked about Stone and Destiny this morning. 
Yes, mm. I forgot about we, that. We had this. We had this yeah, very yeah, yeah. discussion. We literally had this discussion this morning. <laughs> like what? I mean, I like the color palette. I like everything about it, but something just seems off to me. Like I like it, but it just you do that a lot. What? There's something about it that just is keeping me. He's not in touch just with a little bit. Like we is are. it a color? It's yeah, set size. size. Oh, it's a set size. Because yeah. a lot of time I know I'm used to you saying like. I really like this tartan, but I wish they had done the green a little darker. Oh, I wish they had done Glenn the orange or orange. Yeah. I love the concept. I love the idea. I just hate that green that's in it. Got it. I love everything else about it. I just hate that mm-hmm. green. But in this case, it was a set size. Set size, yep. Was it like four inches, four and a half inches? Yeah. Something like that? It's really small. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. It's got a picnic blanket kind of vibe in there. It's like, Bloop. Yeah. Mm. It's got two shades of blue that are real nice, like a, mm-hmm. a darker blue and then like a grayish kind of blue. Um, it's, it's, it's a nice looking tartan if it was tweaked yeah, yeah. i agree it's stone of destiny mm-hmm. stone of destiny no stone yes yeah, is it called it's called stone of destiny it's a stone of scone yeah i know for that yeah i'm just wondering what the inspiration for the color choices and stuff were for a song i'll have to look at it yeah yeah we have, it over, in we have it over in production oh okay yep. okay very good hmm. all right that, that was fun yeah that was indeed fun thank you yep. all right eric that'd be my turn all right colton Dirk cunningham uh mentions that uh many kilt makers don't seem to require a hip measurement when you order how important is the hip measurement and what does it affect on the kilt what's the deal with hip measurement um now he said many kilt makers don't ask for the hip measurement says many kilt makers don't require a hip a hip measurement when you order i would i would say as politely as possible you're looking at the wrong kilt makers um the hip measurement is important a kilt in theory is or in practicality in actuality is a custom-made garment for the most part um so the three measurements that any kilt maker good kilt maker making it for you should need are your waist your hip measurement and the length Mm -hmm. um if there's no hip measurement that means that they're just making it to some kind of standard taper. Um, it means it will not fit you as a custom garment should fit you, or you're looking at just off the peg cheap kilts, in which case you get what you get and you don't get upset, as my son's, you know, <laughs> preschool right. teacher used to say. All right. Um, but yeah, no, a hip measurement is it's pretty important, especially if you have a skinnier waist and you're you know you're muscular in the rear end. Uh, or you're a woman with a bit of an hourglass shape, uh, or uh, you know, alternatively, if you are you know, a man and built like a tube. Uh, if you're not average proportion, then you need the hip measurement. Uh, if you are, if you are built, you know, hourglass kind of shape, then what's going to happen is, if the kilt wants to be, I'm going to use straight up and down. If it wants to be straight up and down, and you're built like that then what's going to happen is one of two things. Either it's going to be real loose at the top and tight around the widest part of your rear end, or you're going to have it fit at the waist and fit at the hip, but that's going to actually pull the pleats. They're going to kind of go Mm -hmm. at a bit of an angle across the back. Mm -hmm. I'm not even joking. I've seen kilts that look like you didn't drink your V8. They were on an angle because it didn't fit right. Um, So yeah, having a... That's if you have a rear end and the kilt is not is built more straight up vertical. Now, the opposite problem exists as well. If you are built vertical, you're a cylinder, you're a tube, you suffer from what we affectionately call noestal disease, then what's going to happen is on the back of the kilt, if the kilt tapers out and allows for a, a like six or seven inch difference between your waist and the hip measurement, and you're just straight up and down, what's going to happen is it's kind of, this part will fit you tight and then you have nothing to support the hips. So it's just kind of, kind of bleh. And then you're going to have a weird, like wavy stage curtain-y kind of effect. I was going to say like effect. curtains, like yeah, stage curtains. Yeah. Exactly. Across the widest part of your butt. And it's not going to have that nice tapered form fit and then hang straight down with a nice straight pleats from there. It's going to look disheveled no matter how well the kilt is made. Mm-hmm. If it is not made to your measurements, it will look disheveled in the back. Mm-hmm. Mac, do you have any any thoughts you want to add into 
lack of hip measurements or, or weird hip measurements on a kilt? No, I think you're hitting pretty much everything there with, especially with that ang- that weird angle thing. We see that quite a bit of festivals. Um, yeah. Like oh, yeah. When, yeah. When a woman yeah. buys one of our, like a, a woman that's really, really curvy buys one of our off the rack casual mm-hmm. kilts where we make off the rack casual kilts for men with a four inch difference, waist to hips. And if a woman with an eight inch difference buys it, it pulls all the pleats to one side. So they kind of, you know, they're, they're not, they're not quite right. And when I, when they try to do that at, at like Kelta classic, it's like, can, can, can I, can I just make this for you and just do it to your measurements, please? Yeah. Let me just, no, I want it today. Oh, okay. Here you go. Like, I don't want to sell that kilt because it's not going to look right. Now, thankfully, a lot of them will do, I want this to wear today. They'll get that to wear today, but they also put an order in yeah. for something mm-hmm. else. And then once they get that, that new, the new one, they're like, oh yeah, now I want to get rid of this one and get, get another yeah. one. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, you're, I think you're hitting pretty much everything square. All right. Do you have any yep. thoughts? No. That's okay. basically it. Yeah. So a proper kilt maker making a custom garment to your measurements will always want your hip measurements. If they don't want your hip measurements, it's an off the rack kilt or it's pre uh, it's pre-made and yep. or they don't know what they're doing, run. Right. Um, if right. you just want an off the rack kilt, it's a great deal. It's super cheap. Um, and that's or and or that's all you can afford. Great, have at it, but understand that you're not getting a custom tailored garment. Um, so you're lower your expectations. Um, any kilt maker worth their salt will ask you for three measurements minimum waist, hips, length. Cool. Yep. All right, Mr. Mac. All righty, we have Nancy. Um, she is saying, Hey, hey my Nancy? husband is more blind than I am. I can at least see colors and have a general idea of what tartan looks like. He has no clue. How would I describe it? Wait, what? Her husband is blind. Okay. Actual well, blind. Is more like... blind than is more blind than she is. Okay. She can at least see colors and has a general idea of what tartan looks like. Uh-huh. He has no clue. How can she describe it to him? The colors? Well, no, the tw- colors? What if, if he's blind, blind from birth. How do you describe? Tartan yeah, there's two different ways to, to see. Someone. I mean, how I don't know how blind is blind. I mean, yeah, let's let's assume um, blind, blind, blind. Okay. I I would describe it as um, a pattern, a set pattern of stripes going horizontal and vertical that intersect. Mm-hmm. Where they intersect, you know, they overlap each other. Well, they overlap each other both directions, but where they where they overlap themselves. You get the true color where they overlap a different color. You get a little bit of a muddying or a mixture of colors, but it is a vertical and horizontal overlapping of stripes is artistically, I guess, the way I would describe it. Yeah. I'm wondering if you could like lean into the lines and like um, make like a Braille like experience where you basically like get some get some craft copper sheeting or some styrofoam or something and just like draw the pattern into something he can actually touch. So you can feel, oh, that's a thick line and those are thin lines and oh, it all forms a square. And you know, like kind of make a 3D rendition of a tartan. If, if we're talking like 100% blind, then yeah, something like that, you know. Hmm. Um, partially blind, I don't know what that would entail, but I'm, I'm thinking it's about the texture. Seems like she's colorblind, he's blind blind. Yeah. So that's what I would think. I mean, it's, it's like it's like ceiling tiles or bathroom tiles, but it's more interesting than that. So I would like try and build um, a 3D model to demonstrate it somehow. I don't know. Yeah, so even thinking like the fabric, like paint that. Yeah, you fabric can, paint would be an easy could, way to do you it. You could just kind of you could like pr- literally print out. Yeah. A tartan, a, 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 and then go over like with an fabric paint, and yeah, yeah, just go right over top the, of the it. puffy or the puffy glue. The, yeah, the craft stuff. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's a good idea. Because then you could actually you could feel right across that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would also point out that they make squares. So it's assuming that it's not like a Welsh tartan where the warp and the weft are different. Um, that it's essentially makes a square. So it's not. Well, that's you know, what I said. No, understood. Hmm. But my point is, it's not a. Re- it doesn't make rectangles. It's not. You know, the, the the pattern is the stripes aren't 
five inches across this way and eight inches across that way. It's mm-hmm. five inches and five inches. Mm-hmm. So for, you mm-hmm. know, flip 90 degrees. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I like the idea of the puffy paint thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like someone that. Actually uh, Steve Walter said about using guitar strings with different wrappings to represent maybe different colors. Yeah. Anyth- yeah, that's that's okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, because you like you get the, the braided steel strings and you get the, the nylon strings and like that. Mm-hmm. That's a really cool idea. Yeah, I mean anything where you can vary the material or like use like hemp twine to represent one color and a cotton string to represent another and a, yeah, I mean that that could be fun too. That'd be neat. Hmm. 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 I feel a uh, middle school art project coming on. It's like that. Yeah. It's like that, but that's 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 neat. It is. It is. Hmm. Trying to figure out how to describe things in a way you don't describe them. No, wait, no, no, it no. Tickles a different part of my brain. You use that. You use the the guitar strings, man. But like you electrify it, so it's like a theremin. So like when you run your finger over the one string, it makes one tone, and when you run your string over, run over another string, it makes another tone. It's like, Ooh. And when you touch the third string, you get electrocuted. And you have the That's music great. of the tartan, man. Like each each thread is like a different tune, man. Groovy. Maybe it does have weed in it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, I'm, all, I'm all then. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. All right, Eric. I'm still coming down from the last question, man. Um, I, I'm curious to know if you decide to try any of those things, actually. I think that's yeah. really neat. I love the fact that you want to share like that, too. That's very touching. Um, okay. It is her husband. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> Richard Whittington um, is uh, wanting for clarification. He says, when you guys talk about the culture, what culture do you mean? Do you mean Scottish, Irish, the diaspora? He didn't say Irish. I just add that in there. But, fair, but fair. when we talk about the culture, quote unquote, what actually are we trying to refer to? You want the long answer, or the short answer. The short answer is yes. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the culture. Um, <clears throat> essentially, when we started the show, um, we were trying to think, okay, well, what are we? What are we going to talk about? It's a Q and A show. So, what are we going to do? Let's talk about kills. All right, given. We know that stuff. Mm-hmm. What else are we going to talk about? We could talk about history. We could talk about Highland dress. We can talk about all these different things. So trying to come up with a short phrase on how are we going to describe the show in a very, very short title. Mm-hmm. So culture. It's So it's, it's for the most part, it's Gallic Celtic culture is kind of where our interests slash knowledge slash expertise lie. Mm-hmm. Expertise, I'll put air quotes around for some of the things. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just basically about the love and expression and the the being students of the culture. What culture? This culture. Um, yeah. As we do the show and kind of sharing our knowledge and sharing our excitement for everything. Mm-hmm. It's the, honestly, the, 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 the nerding out, the excitement, that's the fun part. That's the thing that like it gets... The thing that I think, if if I'm going to speak out of turn about what everyone out there in you know the interwebs, you know the only reason why you would like us is because we're excited about this stuff. We geek out about the same things that you guys geek out about, and that's pretty obvious in the videos. I hope that we put out that we're honestly excited about this stuff, and mm-hmm. we share the same passions that you guys have. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the whole origin of the show is we just want to be, you know, the guys who dig this stuff as much, if not more than you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And share that passion. Yeah. I think, I think to me, it's basically that culture is the umbrella that, 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 that term when we're using, especially in like promotional materials or whatever, it's like, that's, that's just the overall umbrella because unless a culture exists literally on an Island, no culture exists on an Island. Um, if you're talking about like, yeah, 15th century Japan, okay? <laughs> or you're talking say. about you're talking about the indigenous peoples of Australia. Those there are some cultures that are very inward focused and don't change much. But most cultures in the across the globe and across history 
do have cross-pollination and influences from other places. And we are trying to look at that and take that into account here now in the 21st century, basically, that we have, um, we aren't going to limit ourselves to talking about just the highlands. We're not going to limit ourselves to just talking about, you know, Ireland after the Easter uprising. We're not going to limit ourselves to talking about Welsh mythology. These things have some common roots. It's a tree. We want to look at all the branches and all the fruits of that tree. We don't want to just limit ourselves. So it is, we will try and preface things in individual discussions, you know, where it's like, okay, this is about the Scottish perspective on this, or this is about what happened in Ireland. But it's all interrelated, you know, and, and to, to a degree, it has cross-pollinated and enhanced and caused itself to evolve in ways that other cultural areas of the world don't as readily, you know what I mean? And, and the diaspora is a huge part of that. If there had not been the diaspora from these, uh, these let's call them the, the root countries um, over the past 200 years, new ideas and new things would not have happened so it's it's we have to take a holistic view of it in order to do it justice yeah and and on a on a personal level ish i will also say we try to we try to stay in our lane and make sure we're talking about the things that we know about mm -hmm. it's uh, using the the example from from yesterday from the question list, um, somebody was asking us about how to care for fur and things like that. And oh I'm yeah. Like, Eric's like, well, I, I can look it up and I can do that. And I was just like, but we're not like fur care experts. And we'd have to contact dry cleaners and go through the whole thing to understand yeah. how to care for fur if something right. happens to it because we don't want to give bad advice. Anything right. that comes out of our mouths, either we know about. Or we're going to give you a percentage of like, well, I'm like 80% positive. Double check me on this thing. Don't take this as fact. Right. Because we want to be either right or go on record as saying we're not 100% positive. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the things that we like talking about, that we do know about. And we will also we just use culture as the umbrella term because there's other things we want to talk about too. We want to, if we go at it down a rabbit hole talking about 1980s Transformers cartoons. <laughs> We know about 1980s Transformers Admittedly, cartoons. That might be outside of the, the uh, mission kind objective. Of a little bit, a touch. Just a touch. Touch, but it's okay. <laughs> it's my show. I'll do what I want. <laughs> so, anyway, that's what we mean by culture. It means the stuff that we care about for the most part having to do with, you know, uh, Celtic Gallic nations as well as 1980s cartoons. All right. I think she, I don't know if you helped her hurt our credibility. There. We have no credibility. <laughs> All right. Um, that was you. That was me. All right, Mr. Mac. <laughs> All right. So this question just came in. <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> gonna bump it ahead into some here. Okay. Because I think we I think we need help this guy out. Uh oh. We have Michael. Uh, he's saying, okay. Wife had a backspin. Now she is not thrilled with my kilt wearing. A backspin? A backspin. She's changed her she mind. She changed, changed her, mind. her mind. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, she admits to being a bit embarrassed and feels like I put her at risk of dealing, at risk of if dealing with a local bubba that wants to start something over my looks. Now what? We have a. Yeah, it's a similar but different it's very question. Very similar. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. We'll do that one later. Okay. The okay. So, the wife has decided that she's now concerned about your killing after she was, you know, positive about it before. Um, concern for his welfare, it sounds like. No, concern for his and or her welfare. Both. It's, yeah. It seems yeah. like the way the question's yeah. reading. Okay. <clears throat> it sounds like there was a bad experience. Um, hmm. The part of it is, I guess, the way you carry yourself. Part of it's the way... Like, are you open to conversations or are you like, do you look standoffish? Are you wearing it to bars where there's going to be drunk people, you know, who are going to want to start, you know, either start something or, you know, drunk girls are going to try to reach up your kilt or like, is it, is it in an environment where inhibitions are down or is it in a, are you going to the opera in your kilt? If you're going to the opera, little chance that someone's going to try to pick a fight with you whether you're wearing a kilt or something else. Um, so I, I would hope. Um, so I'm very, I'm curious what what you would- Did something happen? Yeah, did something happen? Was there a trigger? Or, 
and or how do you bring her back from the edge outside of because it's she's That's not worried one. about people judging her, which is the common thing we hear from wives. Right. It's like, you know, people are going to think you're weird. Therefore, I'm weird. You know, you know, one part removed. It's related to that. Yeah. Or they're going to judge me yeah, because still, you're doing that. It's still a judgment. Judgment is still the cornerstone. Negative judgment is still the cornerstone. But she's worried yeah. about actual uh, safety or, or discomfort, at least. So, wow, that's a toughie, man. Um, what about a compromise? What, what about doing like, okay, we go to the festival, we go to a Scottish festival or a Highland festival and what we wear, I wear it there and maybe not wear it out on our dates as much just kind of gear it, like getting her more comfortable with him wearing it and in an atmosphere where it's more welcoming in a way, mm -hmm. it kind of building her confidence and his confidence up at the same time. Mm -hmm. with doing it I, i'm just yeah no no, no. you i makes you're, sense yeah i agree uh, i would also say it's you know the environment so again if you're going somewhere where there's a if it, maybe if, if it's to the movies and you think there's going to be a bunch of kids or you think there's going to be you know local yokels who are going to be you know weird about stuff mm -hmm. then maybe forego it there if it doesn't bother you then you know, anytime you're going out with your friends or you're going out to the grocery store or to Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, and she's not with you, wear it then. And show and when you come home without the black eye, then <laughs> she'll know that you weren't confronted, you weren't beat up. Um, make sure that you're not um if something negative does happen, don't give her it, to you by yourself without her. Don't give her reason to fear it by saying like, oh, you won't believe what happened to me at Lowe's today. There's this guy. He was messing with me about my freaking kilt. And I had to kick him out of the store. Don't you know, recount that story to her, maybe. I'm not saying a lie, but I'm saying don't tell her all the bad things that happen if something bad happens. But I would, you know, wear it either by yourself with your friends or areas where or, you know, places where you don't think you're going to have any kind of pushback, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, ask her before you go out and say, you're, you're going to go out on, to, you know, on a date at a nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. And you say, hey, I was thinking about wearing my kilt tonight. Would you mind if I wear my kilt or would you prefer I don't? And give her the option to say, nah, not, not tonight, not tonight. Okay, that's fine. And then after a couple times, if she says no, no, and then in that the third time, and she says, "Well, you know, say, hey, I'm gonna wear my kilt tonight." If she says, "Well, I I I'd really rather you wouldn't," look, the last two times you asked me not to and I didn't, I'm in a kilt mood today. I want to wear my kilt, and therefore it's it's you know evening out. You don't. It's no relationship should be give in a hundred percent of the time to what the other person wants. That's unfair. That's a dictatorship. So a little bit of balance, a little bit of hey. Last two times you asked me not to, I didn't. I'd like to wear it today. I got a new tartan. I, I really want to wear this one today. Or it's it's tartan day tomorrow. I want to wear the kilt tomorrow. You have background. So he did. He did has responded back. He said no bars. I wear them just out shopping in local public so far. She says now she thought I just wanted kilts for fest and fairs. She's not happy with it with full time. And yes, they talked about it first. Oh right. Okay. So the meaning no disrespect to her, but the idea of someone picking a fight might be a bit hyperbolic or and, catastrophization, yeah. as we say in the biz. Yeah. Um, he, he's also added another note here too. Sorry, Eric. No. Uh, when we've been together, she has seen and heard is all she has seen and heard, heard is people approach us and compliment the attire. There has been no problem today. Um, but he does like some of the ideas that we've been saying so but far. It's so you're yeah. right on the cat catastrophization. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, um, it's she's using the 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 abstract excuse of someone's eventually going to pick a fight with you, but they haven't. Mm -hmm. That's the point. It's, yeah, she going... doesn't feel comfortable. She has something. Uh, not not saying she's crazy. I'm saying she has something in her head that is sticking there that she doesn't want it to occur. So she's using that as an excuse, as a proxy. Yeah. I put little to no 
Yeah. Because I had a, I had a thought another thought about this, but I don't know if it applies now because it sounds like it's more she's trying to illustrate the, a catastrophe, you know, catastrophization um, where she's feeling awkward with him in public when she thought it was just a fancy dress for fancy dress parties kind of a thing. Um, viewing it more as a costume than than daily wear. But if he's actually wearing it around town and getting compliments then what I was thinking is not going to apply. So, so either either he's getting compliments and she doesn't like that he's getting attention, mm -hmm. period. And and either she's not or women are paying attention to my man and I'm a little insecure, yeah. um, potentially. Um, so I would say the the only... I was Who was I talking to about this? It may have been you. Um, the only thing you can do in that instance is give shower her with more attention. She's mm -hmm. feeling, she may be feeling insecure for a reason. And I'm not saying this is all on her. This might be on you. This might be her feeling insecure in the relationship. And this is just kind of how it's manifested. So maybe, you know, bringing her flowers and saying, you know, or, or doing things for her to make her feel more special maybe. Um, so that she doesn't feel threatened by other people complimenting you on your dress. Or maybe f she feels underdressed and she feels like you wearing a kilt is overdressing for an occasion. It's, it may be that mm -hmm. kind of balance dynamic difference. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think the, the talking about it is still going to have to happen. There's yeah. no, there's no way around this. Um, I do think I'll, I'll throw in what I was going to say earlier a little bit. Anyway, I think that there's something to be said for putting down your freaking phone. Um, I, I, I have friends who I, I, I know several women who lately there's been a, apparently an uptick in random attacks on women on the streets of, of like New York and stuff where basically just guys come up and just punch women in the face. And there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of unfortunate misogyny out there. There's a lot of irrational hate filled ac activity out there and it's all getting documented and a lot of it's getting blown up by the media. So I think that, you know, I'm not talking about networks. I'm talking about like things like TikTok and Facebook and people sharing stuff and the rumor mill and stuff. And like something is in some cases, things are happening, becoming ever present in the back of your mind because it's in the zeitgeist right now on social media. So maybe take a step back from that and think, OK, is this really what's happening out in the real world? Or is is should I just try and pay attention to the here and now? not what I'm picking up off of media or, or the internet or whatever. Um, and just saying, okay, we're out. We're at the store like we always are. This person complimented him. And now we're continuing shopping. And that's it. You know, think about what's happening in real time versus what might be, you know, the little demons in the back of your, your brain. Um, but I don't know if that applies to what we're talking about. It sounds more like it's a general. No, but I, I kind of like where you're going and I'm going to, I'm going to bring it around back to, I'm as, not shopping as you do. So, and back to the insecurity thing. So, and, and again, I don't know you from Adam. I don't know your wife from Adam, the, uh, or from Eve. I don't know the, <clears throat> so it, it, here's just a, a conjecture. So if I'm out, you know, uh, Eric, you're my wife for this exercise. Okay. So if we're out and a, 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 a woman comes up and says, Hey, I love the kill. Oh my God. You look so great. Blah, blah, blah. And she starts fawning over me. If my reaction is to turn away from my wife and start talking to that person. And I'm obviously excited and I'm really into the whole discussion. And she may, my wife may think that I'm flirting by with that person, even though it's not what my intention is. I'm just excited. Someone's, you know, finally complimenting my outfit, which I've never had in my entire life. If someone comes up to me and says like, oh my God, I love your outfit. You might be like, oh, thank you so much. But uh, yeah, my wife and I are just out here at the store, just having a good time, you know, buying groceries or whatever it is. If you are including her in the conversation, then it's no it longer help. a threat. It's you're saying, hey, I'm with this person, you know, thank you for the compliment for us. You're kind of helping, you know, move the compl compliment to the, to the two of you, not just the way you have looked. Or she may feel less threatened, for lack of a better term, by you inadvertently paying too much attention to this other person, or your ego gets whoop, blown up real quick because you're getting compliments and she's not getting compliments. So Maybe. it's, it, I don't know 
the actual scenario. I'm just trying to think of other things outside the box a little bit. So I would, I don't always, I don't want to just say it's your wife's fault. It's, it's in her head. It's, there's something wrong with her. It may not be. It may be something that you're doing that makes her feel less valued or less desired in that moment. Um, so look at how to make sure that that, that imbalance doesn't exist because ultimately as much as we sell these things and wear these things every day, it's just a piece of clothing. That's your wife. You want to make sure she doesn't feel undervalued, whether it's, you know, in that moment or for any moment, period. She is the thing that matters. And you don't want to give up who you are or, you know, have some kind of weird imbalance in the relationship, but you don't, if there is, you don't want it to be on you. So make sure that you're, doing your part to make her feel valued while also maintaining your own identity and your own individualness in your dress. Mm -hmm. mm. That's all I got. I, I could keep going, but okay, I'll try to stop. Yeah. If you have something salient that you must say. Uh, it may have nothing to do with you. It may be something that's entirely in her past. It could be a trauma response. Um, I would look and see if there's anything of a similar tone that's happening in the relationship. Are there any other flaws in your communication? Are there any other pain points that you've experienced in social settings that might be parallel to this? And this is just kind of like an escalation or like this is the same kind of thing that's um, come up before. It just this time the kilt is the fulcrum as opposed to something else that was. Um, see if there isn't something deeper going on. That's my relationship advice. Yeah. Pat. For the night so bottom yeah. line is communication it's if you yep. are open and honest and transparent in communication life gets a whole lot easier mm -hmm. so start there cool all right we are at the halfway mark of the show i think we are just about ready for our hey guys our latest ambassador phoenix ferris lives in wilmington north carolina with his mom brother, four cats, and a dog. Clearly, allergies are not a problem. Phoenix describes himself as a natural-born storyteller. When he was just 13, he started writing a play that eventually evolved into a novel, and now that novel is a trilogy. That's how it goes, I know. Now, Phoenix knows it's difficult for young writers, but he is hoping to have those books published eventually. He says, If I could make a career out of being a storyteller, acting, directing, writing for the stage, novels, that would be my absolute dream. Now, Phoenix is no fool, just in case, he is headed to college to study English and education. His goal is to become an English teacher. On the heritage front, Phoenix's mom has family roots in Ireland. One of those ancestors was one James Williams of South Carolina, a colonel in the Continental Army and a hero of the Southern Campaign of the American Revolution. From his dad, Phoenix inherited Scottish, Irish, a touch of Slavic, and also connections to Clan Ferguson. Phoenix has always been extremely proud of these Celtic roots. He says, The Scottish and Irish are extremely hardworking peoples who have fought against all odds to continue to exist as they want to. I admire their determination. As Phoenix sees it, history is full of examples of Celtic culture enduring after others have attempted to erase it. But the more they were pushed, the more these people fought back, and he feels that such unwavering confidence in the face of overwhelming odds is an incredible legacy for him. Phoenix has always found Highland fashion appealing as well. His first kilt was a utility kilt, and it was a gift on his 16th birthday. He absolutely fell in love with it. Before that, he was kind of a jeans and t-shirt kid, but now he's pretty much a serial kilter. He says, The man I put that kilt on, I felt like a completely new person. I felt like I had finally found something that made me feel comfortable and confident in my appearance. I've noticed that the majority of other kilt wearers are gentlemen older than me who didn't get into it until much later in life. They often say they wish they would have had the confidence to do it sooner. I don't think we need to start with confidence in order to do something. There's always going to be a learning curve, but it's on you to determine whether or not you're willing to learn. We stretch our potential by challenging ourselves. When you take a huge leap, no matter where you land at the end of it, you'll be further along than where you started. I just love that attitude. And you know what? It gives me hope. Kids like Phoenix are going to be just fine. 
So thank you, Phoenix, for that. I really appreciate it. And good luck with the writing. Here's to our buddy, Phoenix. Cheers, Slange. Phoenix. Slange. And speaking as a failed writer myself, I wish you all the luck in the world. Not failed. You write <laughs> stuff for us. I haven't written any fiction for my own sake in oh, decades. Fiction. No, we write. You, but you write scripts. I've not been a true creative writer. I've been a mercenary for decades, but but as a um, hired gun. Well, yeah, essentially, <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, I stopped writing fiction for my own enjoyment a long time ago. Fair. Yeah. Uh, so, moving along. All right. I mean, assuming you're ready to move along. Uh, okay. If if we must. All right. Thistle Boy 1745 <laughs> uh, says, as tartan designers, what are your favorite colors or color palettes to work with in your designs? Like modern, ancient, muted, or specific colors? What do we like to play with when we're designing a tartan? <clears throat> what do we like to play with? Color -wise. Designing tartan. All right. Um, I know what I would say. but In designing a tartan... I tend to steer away from specific color palettes, but I end up working typically within them. So it's I'm not I'm not thinking to myself, okay, I have to use a muted blue and a muted green and a muted red. I can't go outside of that. Um, I'll use what I deem as appropriate for the design itself. Mm -hmm. um, so I I will pick a lot of colors that have inspiration to me within. The design, like when we did, what I'm wearing it today, when we did the Nordic Heritage, um, we looked at you know the colors that were available back then. We looked mm -hmm. at you know all the different types of things. We thought about you know the the the, the journey. We thought Symbology, about the colors, the symbolism. Yeah, we thought about significance. Yeah. We kind of boil all, you know, put all these ideas, these ingredients in a pot, boil it down, and okay, what are the commonalities? What are the things that we can say within six to seven colors or less? What are the colors we want to use? And then what mm -hmm. shades of those colors do we want to use within the design? Or is there a particular shade of like yellow? If we're going to use gold for the color gold or for metal gold, then we would use a muted yellow kind of color versus mm -hmm. a bright bold. Um, yeah, so it's, I wouldn't say there is a specific color palette, but I would say the colors have to have meaning and symbolism within the design. Mm -hmm. I think that, I, I, yeah, I think that's really the attitude that most modern designers take is that um, you're more likely to think about the concept you have and then choose the colors individually because we have the ability to do this digitally, which makes it a lot easier, as opposed to the, the color palettes were originally invented as ways, frankly, to sell more cloth and to offer more variety, especially if people were bored with the, the version of their clan tartan that they were used to. And then somebody comes along and says, well, hey, have you tried it? Muted, uh, you know, it's like the stromboli to your pizza, you know, so that's for you, Adam. Holy moly, hot stromboli. Um, like that. So I think it's a mod, and you, you use like marled threads and stuff, which is not something people would have thought of doing back in the day either. So it's kind of like people more like more <laughs> often think outside the box with this stuff as opposed to thinking in those palettes. However, we have noted in discussions that people do tend to have palettes that they prefer. instinctively prefer. As a you know, like or more, trends, or trends as well. that they're yep. more likely to want to own more than others. So yes, I would. Yeah, and I I 100% agree. There in you know, it's fact that the mills just kind of expanded from modern to you know to ancient to okay. Now we also offer weathered. Oh, now we also offer muted. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a way for the mill, which is a commercial enterprise, to differentiate their products from everyone else's products. Yeah. Um. So it 100% makes sense. The now within the let's do this within the standard color palettes, yeah, weathered, modern, muted, ancient. What color palette in Mac? I'll bring you in for this one as well. What color palette within the standard color palette of clan tartans do you prefer? I lean more towards muted, muted, okay, okay, Eric. Same, muted, muted, or weathered, okay, yeah. I'm I. I probably lean towards weathered because I like the earthy mm -hmm. kind of feel vibe to it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, historically speaking, you know, moderns and ancients have been the biggest, biggest ones. Right. Now, 
I think partially why I like doing weathereds, and this may speak to both of you as well, is to do something different. Mm-hmm. Like I have a I have a Royal Stewart weathered tartan kilt, not right now, but just in, I have one in the closet. Um, the that one I would never consider myself getting a Royal Stewart. You know the the red tartan you've seen everywhere for time memorial. Um, I would right. never consider buying one of those for myself. But when Martin Mills did it in weathered, I was like. Ooh, I like it because people are going to look at it and go, I recognize it, but it's different. It's, it's 10 degrees off of, Mm -hmm. you know, off of square. Yeah. So that's why I like that one. And that's the thing that appeals to me within it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what a lot of people like about weathered or muted color palettes is that it's not the exact everyday normal one. It's something a little Mm -hmm. bit different. Yeah. I think that, um, and yeah, it, I think the, the concept for the tartan tends to be more important to us, both of us and, all three of us, uh, as opposed to what palette we would start with. I mean, like my, my spirit of the dragon idea, you could say it lends itself towards a modern palette. Okay. But it's the concept first and then the palette second, but everybody's got their own approach on this. Yeah. And everybody's got a different idea of what a con a good concept for a tartan is too. That's true. If only That's there true. were a way we could learn more about what people think. Oh, but wait, there is. All right. Question of the day. We put together an actual survey. Survey? Yeah, survey. A survey. Yes, survey. Um, somebody over there is going to be putting the link down in the comments. Um, so we actually want to know what color palettes you guys like. So do you like modern, weathered, muted? Do I want to know, you know, what weight of fabric you like? These are all the things that we are very curious about. So tell us. Survey we, we put together it takes about five minutes. You know, think about the kilts that are in your closet. Think about your favorite tartans. Think about concepts. Think about all of it. Mm-hmm. And then go to Google and tell us. Yeah, it's technically a Google form. It's a Google form, but it's a survey. It's yeah. like, what, five questions? I have no idea. Yeah, it's like four. It's only four or five questions. But basically because we were like, that's a good question. Let's find out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the power. Indeed. What so. do what do you, the viewers at home, think? Indeed. So. And do for doing for that, kids. you get our uh, eternal gra- gratitude. Um, yeah. Eternal gripey gratitude. Exactly. So, yeah, get down there. Tell us. We're going to plug it again at the end of the show. Um, I'm very curious what other people think because mm-hmm. there are trends. So it Absolutely. will it will evolve over time. Weathered tartans started in the 1950s weren't really that much of a thing until the 2010s. You know, that kind of decade is when they started yeah. really picking up really, steam. Really. And I think it was probably on the back of the tweeds and things like that, picking up steam in the in the rental and the hire industry. Mm-hmm. So it's there are trends within Highland wear. So I'm curious, snapshot 2024, where are we at? Let us know. Take the survey. Do it now. Thank you. Over to you, Mac. Mr. Mac. Give me All a question. I think of is, would you like to take a survey? Would you like to take a survey? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can think about. <laughs> it was the prettiest survey in the world. <laughs> all oh, right. Oh so our favorite defender, Canuck Defender, wants to know, <laughs> what other belts look good with a kilt? That's like a superhero name. <laughs> he is Captain super- America and Canuck Defender. He, he, kind of is a, he kind of is a superhero. What was yeah. the question? <laughs> I was thinking of a superhero now. What other belts look good with a kilt? What other belts look good belts, with a kilt? Yes. Those sold by USAKilts.com. <laughs> yeah, other belts have compared to what? Just do compared a standard, to a kilt belt. A yeah, regular so, kilt belt. Yeah, I'm gonna guess he's he's taking the, the standard yeah. kilt belt that we yeah. all wear. You're not wearing one of your special ones today, are you? No. Yeah. Ian is. He's probably got his new, he's, he's got been his new toy on. He's been digging that yeah. for yeah. a while he now. Really, really has. Um the the key in my mind is it has to be like at least two inches wide, if not two and a half inches wide. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So a a wider belt, you know, is baseline is the key. There are things called Ranger belts, right. um, which is a a two and a half, two you know, two inch or so wide belt that kind of overlaps itself, and then it has a little you know three quarter inch, one inch. Uh, buckle and strap that goes over yep. top, but it essentially makes just like a cylinder around you. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one. 
There's the like the two prong big honking, you know, quasi weightlifter belt uh, yeah. um, that you can get. Um, but it's just a it basically it's a fatter version of a standard jeans belt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are kind of cool. Yeah. It. I I don't love it with a kilt. I like if I'm going to wear a, a, a belt with a kilt, I like a bit of a statement piece. Mm-hmm. Um, I like a bit of a statement piece in the buckle. Um, frankly, the belt itself, don't care too much about whether it's embossed or pebble grain or smooth or what it is. I like the the bling of the kilt belt buckle. Mm-hmm. That's my, it's it's a piece of art. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's all the bling of the buckle um, necessarily. The, um, that's the easiest way to change up your look quickly. Yeah. I have more buckles than belts by a long shot. Yeah. But the, um, but like Ian's is a modified artisanal ranger belt. So he's got like two small buckles on a wide belt. So I think as long as it's wide, it will look proportionately correct with a kilt. But then it comes down to like, you know, what kind of tooling you want on it. Do you, what color do you want? But he's got, it looks like um, it's very much a gun leather kind of a feel or a saddle leather. And he's got like the, the hash mark kind of, um, I don't know if there's a name for it. There's got to be like a waffle kind yeah, of, kind of weave, embossed. Basket weave, yeah. basket weave. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so it looks kind of military-esque or Western-esque, but it's really cool. So I think you can do a lot. It's just a matter of making sure that width is correct. You know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, yeah. Now there's no category I would say. You know, it's like, oh, well, you clearly need a British Commandos circa 1955, you know, you know, web belt. With, with your kilt you know like i have seen people yeah. wear those but now w- w- i'm saying that two inches is my humble opinion the narrowest i would want a kilt belt to be yeah what would be the widest you would want to see a kilt belt oh my wwe yeah you know, exactly winner. yes the ufc championship Brrr. belt yeah yeah what would your what would you say the widest in inches and Mac, you can jump in for this if you want know, as well. I wouldn't go more than like, honestly, three. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking yeah. too. And Mac's yeah. not paying attention. So no, I'm, I'm, it's a I'm, belt, not a girdle. I'm counting out. He's measuring with his thumb. Oh, okay. It's an inch wide, so it's. Um, was your was your thumb always an inch wide, or did you have it shaved so it was a good for measuring? No, that's actually a pretty counts? good. Yeah, it's yeah. a really good thing. It's oh, okay. it's an inch wide. What if you have two different thumbs? <laughs> We well, all have two has... different thumbs. <laughs> no, I have two different thumbs. Same. Look, here's the left one. Here's the right one. Yeah, now look at my thumbs. I know. Um, I'm a mutant. Oh, no. I'm a mutant, too. Hey, look at this. I have My ears don't curl. You ever notice that? No, top, I don't look at your ears too top, often. The top of my good. ears don't curl in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You look fake. I'm a mutant. You look kind of fake. Indeed. Okay. You could tattoo that. Just like, a tattoo a curl, just a tattoo yeah, just, a little no, bit of a no, shadow. No, 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 shadow. Not work. No, you should get the li- you get the lions in there because that's a nice flat surface. It's like <laughs> some book of Kells lines in there. Next survey. <laughs> yes. Should Rocky, should Rocky <laughs> tattoo his ears? <laughs> <laughs> and why do you hate me? <laughs> All right. So um, so yeah, how wide is your the one you're wearing now? The one oh, I just have regular our normal. Compel. What is it? It's like two. These are what two. What was your? What would you think the widest is? These are two and a quarter. Two and yeah. Um, yeah. I'd say three inches is kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't pushing go. it because the other thing is you're if if you're wearing your kilt belt through your belt loops. Yeah, some that's of your fair. belt loops are only if you are if you're using the sporn strap loops on the yeah. kilt. Then yes, that's. So you're gonna run into that problem pretty quick with with those. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's yes, you can wear other styles of belt. It doesn't have to be a kilt belt. Just yeah. bottom line, make sure it's wide enough that it looks good. Yeah, with the traditional kilt, you want it to be wide. Yeah. That's all. Yep. Cheers. All right. Cheers, my dear. Okay. Uh, here's an easy one. Uh, James Michael Coffin asks, how did the term serial kilter come about? How did the term serial kilter come so about? Now, when you talk about c- culture, what do you mean Indeed. by culture? I mean, weird phrases that we Our come up weird, with. We, yeah. we crowdsource weird phrases. Yes. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think it was a, a poll. We we were trying so. to figure out like uh, different words uh, to utilize within our niche. We are a niche in a niche. We are people who wear kilts often. So much smaller bubble than the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the K&C group, we were trying to figure out, and this is years ago, um, oh, yeah. 
what would you call someone who wears a kilt every single day? Uh, and it was trying to think of what some of the the, the, oh, the things were like daily kilter. Yeah. Um, uh, the word kilter just rubs me the wrong way for some it's reason. Like kilt mania. Um, you know, yeah. It's like, kilt. you know, and we kind of crowdsourced it. Okay. Everyone in the group, what do you think you would call someone who wears a kilt every single day? And somebody, uh, it wasn't us, but somebody used the phrase serial kilter. And I'm like, yep, that's it. Done. You win. You win the internet yep. today, my friend. Yep. Um, so that was essentially it. There was no, you know, no big marketing thing around it. It was literally just, you know, asking in the group, yep. hey, what do you want to call this? Serial kilter. Yep. That makes yep. sense. Yeah. It really belongs to the group. Yeah. It definitely belongs to the the Kilts and Culture clan, as it yeah. were. It's so tongue in cheek. It's it's funny. It's fun. It's making light of the whole thing of serial kilters. I don't know. That's not something to make light of, but we do. Yeah. Um, it's that but was it's, the only pushback we got. Yes, so it sounds too much like serial killer, but well, that's kind of. But the it's point. kind of the point, exactly. Kind yeah. of the joke. It's the but. dark humor side of us. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, indeed. Ha <laughs> ha! Death is funny. Um, murder. Am I right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it. Pretty much. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. You, that you there a, in the hat. Let that be a lesson to you, mister. Indeed. Um, speaking of hats, Rocky, a uh, person named Percy Plays, person, Percy Plays, um, says, I'm bringing back the tricorn hat with my kilts. People seem to like it. What are your thoughts? Hmm. I have thoughts, all right. The, uh, <clears throat> this is a meet me at camera too. <laughs> I see what you're doing. Stop it. <laughs> no, the, um, I, I, I understand the desire to take something historical and put it with something else historical and, and see if it works together. I understand playing with fashion to a degree. I understand, um, the, uh, the, the, the mindset of I own this thing. Um, like if I owned, if I did cosplay or I did reenacting or something else, part of me would be like, Hey, I own this world war II jacket. It's really, really warm. I want to wear this more often. I paid a lot of money for this thing. I want to get more use out of it. Or I want to incorporate this into my daily wear. And I also own this hat. And I also own this other thing. And kind of mashing it all together to make a fun thing for you. I get the, the, the desire to want to do that. What I would warn you to be careful of is the caricature making up words, of making it into a caricature. Making it a plaything. So, you own a tricorn hat. Great. If you're wearing colonial American garb, wonderful. If you're, you know, going to be Captain Jack Sparrow, here's to you. Um, but kilts were not historically worn with tricorn hats. So if you wear a, if you're, let's say you're a colonial reenactor, or you're, you know, you're a, 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 a revolutionary war reenactor and you have a tricorn hat, don't, I, 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 it happened at the same time people were wearing kilts in Scotland or you know, the British troops had you know, kilts at the time, but it's, they weren't worn at the same time in the same garment. It's you're, you're crossing history. You're crossing the streams. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're, you're making a caricature of the outfit mm -hmm. into a plaything. Mm -hmm. Uh, my thought on it is do this thing holy or do that thing holy W H O L Y not <laughs> not oh. holy, not, yeah, exactly. Not holy, holy. Um, I would say do one or the other, not both. Um, if you want to incorporate a tricorn hat with contemporary dress, you want to wear it with like jeans and something else just as an accent piece. Cause you're artsy and you want to do, have fun with fashion. That's different than representing Highland dress or representing period dress it's it's all in how you're trying to put it together and express yourself. Does that make sense or not make sense? Makes perfect sense. Lovely. I. Yeah. Yeah. Who hurt you, Percy? Now, okay. So no, no mocking jokes. Um, in all seriousness, yeah. I, everything you said, basically, 
Um, the only time I've ever seen people wearing a kilt with a tricorn hat is steampunk events or maybe a Ren Fair. It's it's a fantasy. It's you know it's the guy who's got the kilt and the Assassin's Creed hood on. Um, it's definitely play costume stuff. There's only two people I know who have worn tricorn hats with modern clothing and somehow carried it off. And one of them wasn't even real. One of them is Nero Wolf in the Timothy Dalton series. Uh, for some reason, they decided to have him wear a tricorn hat whenever he left his house, which was very rare. And freaking Adam Ant. If you're not Adam Ant, you will not be able to carry off wearing a tricorn hat <laughs> <laughs> on a daily basis i don't think i don't know now i'm gonna have to try but um uh because i am down with the ant music but um but no seriously it's it's a it's an art thing it's a costume thing it's a play thing but it's not a historic thing even going back to the period troops wearing kilts were not issued tricorn hats they had uh, they had shakos later on and they had the type of cap which i can't remember the name of they had bonnets. Cam, they have bow they had, morals yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, basically bonnets, umbrella term, tams. They didn't wear tricorn hats. It was not part of the uniform, ever. It was not a part of Highland dress, ever. So um, you're not doing something historical. You're playing around with stuff for fun. So, you know, I, I you would... do you, but don't please do not try to say it's bringing back a historical trend. Yeah, I don't, and I don't think he is. What I would here here's kind of where I'm I'm falling with it in the in the art piece outfit thing. Yes. Um, if I because I'm so artsy, um, I've been known for my artistic flair. Um, <laughs> I, I just look at that look at that artistic mm. flair right there that little bling. Yep, yep <gasps> available now usakills.com. Um, <clears throat> the if John McPhee, friend of the show, um. The, is the uh, guitarist for the Doobie Brothers and you know, and excessive amount of other things. Um, really, really cool guy. Really, really nice guy. He got a uh, sheriff, is it a sheriff? Montrose. Dub Montrose doublet from us. And we're on stage. He had jeans on and Montrose doublet um, and was, you know, rocking out, literally, rock band, the Doobie Brothers, um, on stage in a Montrose doublet. There's there's a certain amount of, it's, it's a different, style he's being artsy with he's a performer he's on a stage star. doing a thing and he didn't do a you know a, a pair of mc hammer pants plus montrose doublet <laughs> plus tricorn hat <laughs> with feather and michael jackson rhinestone glove and <laughs> and bootsy collins boots no he picked one thing and, and kirk cobain's bathrobe <laughs> exactly he picked one thing a flannel shirt he okay. picked one thing to use as his art piece for the outfit. And it worked because it was one thing. Your attention was drawn to one thing in the outfit. If the kilt is an attention grabbing thing, people are going to pay attention to the kilt, yep. period. If you're wearing a tricorn hat in a pair of jeans and something else um, to make a, a fun, funky fashion statement, um, the tricorn hat is going to be the attention grabbing piece because it's the thing that doesn't fit with normal, normal fashion. So I would say let one piece of the outfit do the talking. The more pieces that do the talking, the more it's just a, a shouting art mess that you are strewn in. Garbled. Yeah. Garbled, garbled. mess. Garbled. Yeah. Becomes a garbled. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's what's not working for me yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah. Mac, do you have any thoughts on tricorn hats and kilts? See, back in the day. Back I in used, my day. I used to wear my kepi or my forge cap okay. with, with a regular everyday attire. Now, that's a little bit more baseball hat oriented, so it was yeah. a little less jarring. Than yeah, but with a kilt. No, it was just t shirt and jeans. Yeah. Um, which he's saying he wears the uh the tricorn with okay. jeans and a t shirt too. So sure, I just wouldn't wear it with a kilt. It is just that is again, that is a bold <laughs> is a bold statement. Um but immediately it but to me it's like it's an immediate signal, oh, I'm a reenactor. Anybody that, even has a 
and that's what I would vague think. sense of what it is. They're gonna be like, oh, he must be a Civil War guy. Yeah, you know? I would. I would go. I would automatically head down that stream. Mm-hmm. Um, I know guys who wear uh, War Two Jeep caps all the time. Just, right. Right. It's. Now, what if it was a tricorn hat that was a fashion-y twist on a tricorn hat in the same way that like Slash from Guns N' Roses had like a top hat looking thing, but it wasn't really a top hat. Yeah, it, it was. was a fa- but it was a fashion. It wasn't like a top hat beaver, you know, that you would wear to a black tie event. It was a fashion version of the thing. Um, what if it was a tricorn hat with like scallop shells or a skull in the front or something like fun and different I wouldn't wear it with a kilt still, but it would it would fit in like with jeans. I wouldn't necessarily think, oh, he's a colonial reenactor because it's not a no, colonial. So they're gonna think you're a pirate. So yeah, nine gonna, times out of ten, it's gonna be like pirate, pirate or colonial. Or yeah. Yeah. say, would you also get the same? I'm not saying this is gonna be correct, Eric, but I'm gonna say, would people also put that down the road of steampunk? Yeah, um, which is fantasy weird yeah. because it yeah because i mean oddly enough are part of the, ships don't fly <laughs> yeah i mean it's uh well they can but under very bad circumstances um <laughs> <laughs> they don't usually land yeah well. trebuchet <laughs> yes um yeah i mean like even try try corner it's just it, it's a fun fun playing with a costume kind of thing i mean it's not even victorians so if you're if you're if you're a snob steampunk which doesn't exist and if it does again who hurt you um it should all be like victorian right you know a victorian edwardian so tricorn is predates that that would be clock punk you're doing the clock oh, yes. Punk thing yes um which as is opposed th- to clockwork punk clock punk is actually that's, a thing that's late 70s that's 18th century fantasy but um so yeah you know i mean frick i would i would consider wearing one out to a club maybe but i wouldn't yeah i don't know it's just, it's just it just seems like too much to me it just seems like it's too much now, I am going to the Revolutionary War Museum with my son's field trip at the end of this month, so maybe I will come back cool. to the next show. Tricorn hat in hand. You know what it is? It's also, you know how we say, like, um, the hats that look best with kilts tend to be much smaller, narrow brim. Tricorn with a with a kilt. Let's imagine you were doing it. It's still this kind of wide-ish shape, which is the kind of shape we usually say does not look right with the silhouette of a body wearing a kilt. Just like a fedora, like you get your you get your Indiana Jones or your or your Philip Marlowe, you know, gangster fedora on there with a kilt. It looks odd because you got this shape up here and then the shape of the body with a kilt. It just doesn't aesthetically it doesn't work. So just from a technical standpoint, I don't think it works. I agree. And we have talked about this way too freaking long. I'm sorry. You know what looks great with a uh, with a kilt? A flat cap with a pen? A brand new flat cap called the Killarney model from Muckross Weavers. Beautiful, beautiful. Sample hat right here. Sample. Pre, pre done. I got I got in ground floor. Very excited about this hat. This looks great with a kilt. Not so much to track on. Product yeah, placement. Your mileage may vary. All right. That was me. Yes, that was you. Mac. Now, see now, picturing Flavor Flav with a, like a wind-up clock, <laughs> the sundial. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Flavor Flav in Germany, cuckoo clock. There we go. Mm. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, and nylon running Lederhosen. Hmm. Flavor Flav in Lederhosen. Oh, <laughs> you put no, that thought in my bright, head. Bright red nylon Lederhosen. Adam, Nike, you know Nike you know you're going it. to be uh, uh, photoshopping this, right? <laughs> Flavor Flav, later hosen, cuckoo clock. Adam is polishing up his resume right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just passed the buck one seat over. <laughs> uh, uh, I, yes. I, I'm the one who invented the leader hosen scoring, so I'm not above doing that kind of thing. Fair. It looked better than I thought it would. <laughs> looked about as bad as I thought it would. That was kind of fun, actually, but I don't know. <sighs> Damn kids. All right, Mac. Save All right. us. Rocky's going to love this one. Oh, that's great. It's <laughs> a great way to start a question. You're going to love this one. Kim is asking, is it wrong to wear sandals with a casual kilt and t-shirt in in spring and summer? They live in Georgia and the husband hates to wear boots and eat. Okay, whatever. Are you try- Are you time traveling to uh, <laughs> Yasger's farm in the late 60s? Um, <laughs> what's a Yasker's farm? 
Isn't that where Woodstock was? Maybe. Yeah. I, I thought it was know. Yasker's Farm. Okay. Is it Yasker's Farm? Where was Woodstock held? Was it Yasker's Farm? I think it's Yasker's Farm. Woodstock, New York, right? No, yeah. it's right next to Woodstock, New York. It's not it actually. Woodstock. Yes, correct. Um, I know somebody somebody tell there. us in the comments and then Mac, tell me what if I'm right or not, because I'm very, very curious. Kelly and Liam went there this summer. They loved it this past summer. All right. Anyway. Um, no, burn all sandals in hell. The uh, <laughs> At least put ask on me how I feel crocs, about sandals. Okay. Uh, put some Crocs on. No. Um, it... My my theory on sandals, one man's opinion, they should be worn on the beach and only on the beach. So help me God. Um, it's I'm not a fan of sandals. Nope, never have been, never will be. I would go barefoot or sneakers before sandals. They're they're neither fish nor fail. Um, other people enjoy sandals. Fine, to each their own. Mm -hmm. I I judge you. <laughs> I I yeah, it's not my thing either. I would say at least try go for like chunky you know heavy duty tactical type sandals and not anything that's like a just give me it just shut up um not anything that's a bright color just like we would say for shoes keep it like the suede the brown the black nothing colorful and and uh, and gods forbid don't wear flip-flops um but you know i i've been down in virginia during august heat and how brutal it is so yeah, I understand the motivation. So if that's how what he's going to do, it's what he's going to do. If you're going out for, to, to look nice, please don't do that. If it's for the day and you're going out to like, you know, chop wood or whatever. Well, you shouldn't be doing that wearing sandals anyway, but you know what I mean? Um, I, will, I, will, I will suggest this as an alternative, jungle boots. Maybe maybe try a pair of jungle boots. I'm still stuck on the tactical sandals because now I want tactical sandals. They, they have like, they have, they have pockets for my, you know, additional clips. Yep. They have a knife. Yep. Little, yeah, it's yeah, indeed, indeed. You need a tactical, more expansive about molly the strips across means, it. No, but... no, no, no. Tactical sandals, you know, to be okay. worn in war. Yeah. <laughs> How do you make tactical sandals? I don't know. <sighs> Heavy um, duty hiking sandals. Okay? Yes. Birkenstocks. You know, yes, sure. Birkenstocks. Birkenstock is how you say it in Germany. Thank you very much. You know, it'd be great. It's not Birkenstock kilt, like a, you freaking hippies. A kilt with leader. Birkenstock. Damn it. Cut with Lederhosen. And Birkenstocks. There you go. Mac, so, Mac yes. Birkenstock. If you're going to wear Birkenstock sandals. Birkenstock and brogues. Or, or, or Birkenstocks for you Americans. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, I'm not kidding. Birkenstock is how you say it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm very angry about this. Stay on topic. Indeed. I don't like them. The If you're going to wear them, is it done? Sure. Are people going to do it? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. don't wear freaking socks with them. Don't wear kilt hose with them. They should only be worn with essentially a t-shirt very, very casually. And I won't send the, <laughs> I won't send the snipers after you. Don't send you. the kilt police. Yeah, exactly. I won't send the kilt police, but I should send the kilt police. just not the snipers. They live inside of my head. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Um, I would never do it. I'm not encouraging people to do it, but if you're going to wear sandals with the kilt for the love of God, please T-shirt, maximum casual outfit, period, end of story. Mac. Now, are sandals above buckle brogues or are buckle brogues above sandals? The people who wear buckle brogues <laughs> and the people who wear sandals should be put into a gladiator arena <laughs> with as many weapons as possible and forced to fight to the death. It's it's really no. I, I I I'm gonna guess that there's more sandal wearers than buckle bro wearers. Yeah. Uh, either due to cost or or you know whatever. So we probably have to give the buckle bro wearers better weapons or at least shields, maybe a targe. Um, But they still need to fight to the death. Uh, we'll need some clips from a gladiator now. <laughs> And uh, any Star Trek fight, maybe uh, Gangsters of Triskelion. Okay. Yeah, for the combat. Indeed. And Indeed. yes, it was Max Yasger's dairy farm in Bethel, New York. There you go. Mm. Me knowing hippie stuff, hippie stuff. from the <laughs> 60s. It's my long flowing hair gives it away that I'm a hippie. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your hair so rich and full? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Are we done? Yeah, I guess.
Mac, don't ever do that to me again. <laughs> um, but wait, it could be just as bad. Um, <laughs> Colt. Colton Derek Cunningham says, this is practical, uh, when sitting on a bar stool, should the pleats go under your butt or over the stool? What is the proper way to sit on a bar stool when wearing a kilt? Okay. We're assuming the bar stool does not have a back. Has I, a back? Yes. Obviously, bar stool. under the butt. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> One of those yuppie. How do I do it? Now, first... I, let me address the elephant in the room. If you are not wearing underwear, for the love of God, <laughs> for the love of all that is sanitary and holy in this world, hmm. put the pleats under your own dirty butt. Do not sit your naked butt on a bar stool. I'm starting there. Yes, I'm judging you. So, assuming you have underwear, you have options. If you don't have underwear, don't do that. For the love of God. Uh, sorry, I had to whip it down. So, Three Stooges reference. Why you? Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to the question. Never. <laughs> if you're wearing underwear, then I would say that, personally speaking, I break it into two categories, and then one of the two categories I break in half. If I am leaning against the bar stool meaning feet on the ground and just kind of, you know, cheeks upon bar stool, like off to the edge of the bar stool, then obviously pleats underneath myself. If I am fully seated upon the bar stool, feet on the rungs, you know, right up there, um, then I would say it's probably for that 50-50. And uh, I would probably start with pleats underneath myself. Um, but if I sit on the bar stool and the pleats are like bunched up weird, um, or it's a heavier duty kilt and it's like, I can't get comfortable, then fine. I'll just kick them off the back and be like, okay, fine. Underwear on the bar stool. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's my really long winded answer to a stupid, simple question. Eric. Yeah. Pretty much, I, I, I never really thought about much, but I think I almost always, uh, sit on the pleats. I just sweep them like I would in a normal chair, honestly. I could see that maybe with some stools, um, like if it's got that limited um, footrest bar that's very narrow on the front of the stool, um, it would be it feel more awkward to do the the man spread you're supposed to do when you're wearing a kilt because um, then you're like putting your feet together at the bottom and you're still spreading your knees out. It might be awkward and therefore it might be easier to have the pleats going over the stool. But honestly, I just don't like the feel of a any kind of a chair, especially like a vinyl bar stool on the backs of my legs. So it's just like sticky and stuff. So I'd rather be sitting on my pleats anyway. Yeah. So I, I just default to that. And half the time I'll just, I'll lean on it if given the option, you know? Yeah. I, I would so. also say that it's, if you're sitting on the bar stool and, and the pleats are bunching up underneath you, the other option you have is you grab the fabric on either side and pull it out the sides. So you're mm -hmm. sitting on less fabric yeah. on the bar stool. Um, what I will say is if you are on stage, in a kilt. Lean on the bar stool. Do not jump up onto the bar stool because the people in the front row will get more of a show than they paid for. Mm. Um, it is worth the price of admission, my friends. Um, no, there's a, uh, yeah, it's remember you're in a kilt and you know, you have, you know, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so I don't think it was on camera. Uh, it's, the bottom of the kilt is at eye level with people, you know, coming out. So leaning on the bar stool, your angle of your body is facing down towards the ground. If you're fully up on the bar stool without your, you know, your knees together in the front, which is uncomfortable, um, yeah. then you're you're giving an eyeful to the audience. So just be aware. I'll go one more. I this is speculation, but I have a feeling you'd be more likely to attract uh, kilt lifters or uh, indiscreet, inebriated onlookers if the pleats are going over the back of the bar stool. That's fair. They're going to see this curtain and they're going to want to know what's behind the curtain. And they're more likely to come along and go or do something hoping to see your butt on a bar stool for whatever reason. But, it's the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, so you know, pay no attention to the junk behind the curtain. So yeah, it's... Uh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. I, I, I would say that would be a reason to 
not do it also. I agree. So, yeah, never thought of that. But, yeah. Yes. Good luck. Mac? I'm just imagining the sound, the tackiness getting off that. Oh, God, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. And you think about how everybody else has sat on that bar stool yep. and yeah. And what's spilled Ugh. all over uh, that stool. Yep. I yep. love how your ass yep. makes a suction noise when you get <laughs> off a bar stool. <laughs> <laughs> Vacuum sealed. What? No. Yeah. All right. Enough of this. Mac, what do we got going on? All right, here's another We fun are one. here to serve. Answering the important questions. Noah is asking, other than a skin do or a skin brew. What other fun things can one store in the top of one's hose? Skin brew or skin do? I can't answer this. A very tall, skinny I flask. I can't answer this. If, things you have to tuck into your socks. Is that where we're going with this? Without wearing underwear? Um, no. Okay. Close, but okay. not. Okay. <clears throat> what else do you shove into your socks? I don't put anything in my socks. I worry too much about stuff falling out. Yeah. In fact, I, I I often I will not do a ski and do very often because it just, just makes me a little nervous. Now I've been I've done it for special occasions, but yeah. Yeah. Um are you talking for decorative purposes or practical purposes? Because theoretically you could stick all kinds of things down there. You know. <laughs> cash, your ID, condoms, whatever. But you know, but if you're talking about decorative, I don't I can't think of anything else, you know, maybe a feather. You just have like feathers coming out on either side. Twizzlers. Twizzlers. They'd be nice and warm and just soft. You know. one out and take a My snack. emergency Snickers beef, bar. Yeah. Beef jerky. Well, beef. See, a Snicker, or a Twizzlers are going to melt. Snickers is going to melt. Not if it's in the wrapper. Well, if it's in, yeah, it might still wrap. Because yeah, it's yeah. still yeah. against your leg. Yeah, yeah. I think mm. I think the thing is about the beef jerky. It's snap it to Slim Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Snap it to Slim Jim. <laughs> Um, in all seriousness, I think that the putting the ski and do down the sock was kind of a, an odd affectation anyway. I mean, there's the, the lore is that it was a way of showing your friends. I have a weapon. I have a weapon, but I'm not going to hide it from you. I'm putting it right here. So we both know where it is and it's harder for me to reach without you knowing what I'm up to. So it's a point of honor and being a good guest and all that kind of stuff almost 90 percent certain it's apocryphal um but the uh so what else would you stick down your kilt hose i mean i don't know I'm not thinking of anything spare bacon spare bacon um, yeah, exactly somebody's did, pocket bacon uh say they've seen someone store their pipe yeah i actually it, have and, seen uh, yeah i actually have seen classic that. okay yeah i've seen somebody do that <laughs> I, probably the same person yeah it was a celtic classic yeah because i was there and it's that's a it's a different idea for it like i've seen Mm-hmm. Um, one of our customers, Verlin Hayes, he's got a little pouch that's hooked on his belt for his pipe. Right. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. yeah it's, if I'm going to store things on my person while wearing a kilt, it's not going to be in the socks. It'll be, you know, a belt pouch and sporing. If I have a vest on, you know, pockets of the vest, or if I have a jacket on pockets of the jacket, I'd rather store things in a more secure location um, than, than the kilt hose tend to be. Um, right. I, don't, I don't have a lot of things tall and skinny that I need to store. Um, and it's, yeah, if, if I'm going to carry a knife, it's typically going to be one that's more utilitarian. Um, and I don't carry a lot of things on me in general. It's phone, mm-hmm. my, my credit cards and license are in my phone case and a key. That's really all I need and maybe a money clip. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty low maintenance with things I need to carry. Yeah, it's an interesting thought, but no, uh, I, I, it's like I never run in a formal setting where I'd be wearing a ski and do. But the idea of running and having something fall out of your sock would make me paranoid, also. But I don't know. Yeah, Mac. There's just vape pen, drumsticks. Right. I've seen guys stick their drumsticks down mm. down them just because it was it's convenient. convenient. When they're waiting around, you're yeah. standing around waiting. Yeah. For the next set or whatever. Your tin yeah, whistle when you go on tour? I, I was going to say, right. I know, uh, <laughs> I think Josh, yeah, Scruffy yeah. Uh, from Dropkick Murphy's used to have, uh, he puts his tin whistles uh, down his kilt hose. Now I eventually made him a, a secret pocket underneath the front apron of his mm-hmm. kilt for his, like, his 
mm-hmm. three or four different Tim Wessels he used to do. Yep. Um, but yeah, I can't think of anything else that I would need to shove into my socks. So yeah, nothing. Okay. Hope that helps. Kind of. That was different. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different question. Indeed. All right. Eric, one more from you, then one more from Mac. No, it's that time already, or is it? Okay. Um... I can't oh. read. I have my glasses on. It's right there. Okay. I... Um. Uh. Bathrobe Batusai. Bat. Bathrobe Batusai. Batos. Batosai. Gaijin. Um. Says I often see a tartan design I like but don't know the name. Is there an <clears> app <throat> or a website where one can take a picture of a tartan and match it to find out what it is? That is a good question. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, the simple answer is no. There's not. Um, the the since there has been internet, there's been or since there have been apps for the last you know 15 years, there's been people saying, "Hey, somebody should really make an app where you can take a picture of a tartan and see what it is." Um, a, it would probably be pretty pretty expensive to develop the thing and a super duper duper niche audience um, who would actually use such a tool. Um, but we were curious. It, this this theory, this idea has come up more than once of, of our time in business. Um, so Eric, when we were, you know, uh, when we got these questions in the other day, Eric said, what about Google Lens? So I think the 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 more the smarter that AI gets and the better that AI gets over time, I think it's going to do a good or reasonable job. So we took, you know, as to test this theory, um, we took the Albanac tartan, not one that is like, you know, massively available from a billion different places like Royal Stewart, um, took a picture of that and said, okay, hey, Google Lens, do your thing. Um, and it came back with our website, it came back with Albanox website, and it came back with a bunch of other purple tartans. So right. it came back with the right answers, not you know answer one, answer two, and then everything else. It was answer like four and answer 12 out of 30 or 40 different tartans. But it did give us the right answers. I also yeah. took a picture of, was it American Dream I took a picture of? Yep. And... Um, McDonald, Clan Randall, Weathered. I happen to have in my office one of my kilts. I just took a picture with my phone to make sure there was no data attached to it. There's no, you know, uh, stuff in the back end of the picture that can say this was a picture from USA tags. kilts. Yeah, Meta no tags, no metadata, exactly. Um, and it when I took American Dream a picture of it, it brought back a lot of red and blue tartans, but it also brought back American Dream. So I would say... Google Lens is actually a reasonable answer for this. Now, you will have to dig through a lot of things that are similar to find the right one. But I picked tartans that weren't, you know, mass produced from a thousand different places and they popped up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, it worked, but the the wheat to chaff ratio shall we say, was not great. But wait, there's another option. And this one's for the Luddites. There's this thing on the internet called <gasps> the Kelsen Culture Facebook group. And if you if you take a picture of a tartan, and people do this all the time, if you take a picture of a tartan and load it up there on the group, you'll get a lot of responses and you'll get several people <clears throat> who are just immediately are like, oh yeah, that's that's Mackenzie Weathered. Or, yeah, I know that one. Yeah, so gee whiz, humans are better at some things than machines. Go figure. For um, now. For now. Yeah. The, there goes my career. But um yeah, there, so there's use use the use the social resource. Why not? Yeah. Or email us or send any send, send a message to our Facebook or whatever. Um we you know we get messages all the time. Hey, this tartan, I saw this somewhere, or this is my grandfather's kilt. What tartan is this? You know, if you're looking to recreate something or you want to get a, you know, your own kilt in that tartan, send us an email. We can hook it up as well. Yeah. It's, we are nothing if not, you know, a, a fountain of knowledge willing to spout forth on you. <laughs> 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 
regurgitate facts, if you will. That's actually one of the fun things too. I, I, I do, I do get amusement from when there's a chart and then we don't, you know, like, huh, you know, like the, this morning we were doing a TikTok and we we're talking about the brave uh animated film tartan and brundock or yeah whatever it's called bun barn or whatever yeah. the name of they, they came up with for it was and we were like what does this remind us of what is it and, and you 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 realize it remind you of the royal canadian air force yep so there's actually we get to nerd out sometimes when this happens so that's good it's almost like we care about this stuff and we enjoy it ourselves hmm mm -hmm. go figure you know you've done yeah. enough of these shows now that there's enough data there's enough of a data set that you could build a, uh, a machine learning version of me. So you actually don't need me anymore. Sweet. Yeah, you could just have the virtual Eric. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Work out just fine. Hmm. So I got glitch. See, glitch. now I want, glitch. now I want a Max Hedrum version of you. <laughs> just sit next to me. That'd be pretty spectacular. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, we're old. All right, Mac, I'll give you the final question. All right. So happy D-O double G. To you as well. Um, wants, to, wants to know, what is our what is your guys' take on wearing kilts to rock, punk, industrial, et cetera, band concerts? He'd like to ask more questions related to this, but he doesn't want to flood the chat. Well, it's the last question, so I mean, <laughs> flood the chat all you want. Um, um, the basic answer is Yes. No, have, have done it. No, the basic answer is hell yes. Yeah. Or beep, yes, I'll I'll beat myself there. Yep. Um, absolutely. freaking lootly. I have kilts specifically for that. So yeah, I mean, don't don't wear your best one. Don't wear your clan <clears throat> tartan unless you really want. To. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I'm, okay. No, I'm not. I'm take. I take that back. You could. You could. Yeah. I take that back. Um, the caveats we usually give are that um, the sporing could be a hassle getting through security event security and we've done a couple of videos on ways you can deal with that or circumvent, circumvent it <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, but and and crowd surfing can okay, watch out for that well it's done um we do recommend undergarments um but yeah i mean i i've been the i've been the shows where a large percentage of people were kilted you know, especially like an industrial show or a metal show. So or dropkick Murphys or flogging Molly. Yeah, or, or Celtic, or punk, punk, yeah, show. Celtic yeah. punk show. Yeah. So the the thing that I I always find amusing and kilts one hundred percent break this paradigm is the uniform of a subculture. So if you're going to a punk show, you have to dress in a leather jacket with, you know, homemade patches and you must have either a shaved head or punk or, or spiked hair or colored hair. You must wear Doc Martin boots. You must have ripped jeans. You must, they must have zippers on them. Ba, 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 ba. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, so that's the punk soul culture. If you're going into the goth soul culture, you have to wear black. You have to have makeup. You have to do, da, da, da. so every single subculture that purports to be individuals has their own uniform. I find the irony of that delicious. So one of the things that I let, for the most part, the one of the You're things- You're overstating the case, but- okay. I am, but I'm not. The, there, there is a aesthetic, there is an aesthetic within it for a reason. Um, mm -hmm. The thing that I love doing is going to, you know, punk shows in a kilt or something else in a kilt and putting a kilt in an environment which is not typically seen because that is the true mark of an individual is doing what you want to do in the thing. So you don't have to completely conform to whatever scene you are into. You can still wear a kilt in the scene and remain your remain an individual, maintain your individuality within it. And frankly speaking, you're going to get more kudos for doing something like that then you are going to get jeers. Like more people are going to be like, dude, that's freaking awesome. I love it. You can wear a leather jacket with a kilt and make it work. Paul McKenzie does it at the Real McKenzie's. Like there's a ton yeah. of different ways yeah. to incorporate the kilt into your outfit, into a subculture, but you're, you're just using it as a piece of clothing to represent you as an individual. Yeah. You're not dishonoring it in any way. You're just, it's, what you wear. Therefore, I'm going to wear my, you know, my Johnny Cash, you know, FU t-shirt with my kilt to a punk rock show or to a metal show or whatever, because 
it's fun, and that's what I want to do. Yeah. That's my rant. I Sorry. Think, I, I think your rant's a little... Don't take it this the wrong way, but it's a little dated at this point. I think there's more variety. Okay. Now, it depends on the scene. If you're in the larger mod scene, less so. But if you're in the... If you're in the goth scene, goth scene is probably the most variety of any of them, Fair. honestly. Um, I will say that you're more likely to see utility kilts or solid color kilts at metal shows, industrial shows, goth shows. Um, tartan, you're much more likely to see at a punk show. Um, so if you're trying to play around with the sex, that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, but uh, of course you can do it. Just do it. Enjoy it. Do it. That's the whole point. Yeah. The point is to not only celebrate your heritage but include it in your daily wear it does not need to be relegated to the back of your closet for formal events only it's all about incorporating what you love with whether it's your heritage whether whatever it is incorporating it into your daily wear you don't make you don't want to make a dog's dinner of it and go 897 different directions but incorporating your heritage into your look into your aesthetic is 100 percent the way I want to do it and the way I think other people should do it. Don't yep. be afraid of incorporating it. Express yourself, period. Before you wreck yourself. Yeah, express yourself before you wreck express yourself. Express yourself before you regret yourself. Because tartan bullets are bad for your health. Shotgun bullets are bad for your health. Thank you, Ice Cube. Okay. Uh, indeed. Trouser tubes are We're bad paraphrasing for your loosely. Just a tiny bit. Yes, indeed. All right. Boys and girls, thank you very much for joining us on this meandering journey. Yeah. <laughs> Until next time, it's Lanjama. Elephant shoes. Elephant shoes. Elephant shoes? Elephant shoes, elephant shoes to you too, Mac. <laughs> no, elephant shoes looks like I love you if you just mouth it. Oh. Elephant shoes. Elephant shoes to you. Everyone's like, no Great. sound. No sound. I got no audio. So they think I'm saying, I love you. <laughs>